so I'll start with myself, uh, Timothy Hill of the Open Data Institute and program lead for Open Active. Uh, Andrew Marshall. Jamal Shill, Principal Architect at Gladstone. Uh, David. David Gentles, one of the relationship managers at London Sport. Thank you. Uh, Tim Corby. Hi, Tim Corby, also of the Open Data Institute. I'm an engagement consultant on Open Active. Uh, Nick Evans. Nick from Iman. Ollie. Hiya, Ollie from London Sport. And finally, uh, Vicky. Oh, sorry, you're muted, Vicky. I'm Vicky and I'm from Act Sport. Um, so I, d I thought that Stonewall and uh, Lou Englefield were going to come as well, but. Yeah, apologies. So I've had apologies from LGBT plus consortium from Paul who's on leave and then someone who was meant to come didn't come and then Stonewall errands in America. So yeah, sadly, but they are. And I did see on the agenda that further follow ups might be needed. But yeah, they've, they've sent their apologies today. OK, cool. Yeah, I will just share my screen here. Uh, and yes, uh, as you said, um, that was one of the one of the first questions really was who else do we need to to talk to for this topic um because yes i'm afraid <laughs> i'm afraid vicky you're sort of in the i'm in the, the seat at this point yeah um, um because yeah ollie yeah. ollie raised this um some months ago actually and it's just been a question of scheduling to to get uh, an appointment in um and the question is really in the first instance, what the what the requirements are that we've, you know, the specifications are largely focused on sort of bare bones description of um, physical activity facilities and, and classes. Um, and we've sometimes added extensions to deal with additional requirements that are needed. Um, but I'm not too clear what the requirements are in this instance, that what, what the shortcomings are in the sector as a whole, and then specifically within our, our data standards. So I'm just going to unfortunately stare at Vicky and, and ask what the how, how the situation could be improved. Vicky, so I'll give a little bit of a, pre a tiny little preamble before you come in. Is that going to be helpful in terms of how we, we had the discussion and where it came from? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, so I've uh, had an ongoing relationship for with without for sport, um, and we were just having a discussion about kind of London sport and us supporting the LGBT plus sector better. And obviously, we're talking about um, one of the issues that clubs that might be LGBT plus friendly or want to specifically focus on that as a target group finding it kind of quite hard to connect with people that might want to find clubs and, and, and we just had a discussion and it just came to my mind having a kind of long standing relationship and understanding how these things work that actually from from a finder's point of view it it would be very hard to find a club that were did have a target audience other than things like word for mouth but then also from a club's point of view in terms of promoting to a specific target group and we know that there are things like filters for disability friendly and maybe some other kind of filters and that's really the conversation that really just started me thinking and then obviously following up with Ollie to think actually this seems a very very simple solution to to uh, to a problem that clearly has been identified in terms of connecting um, supply and demand so so is that helpful Vicky and then you can yeah, I suppose, to that. I suppose my first question actually is what other categories do you do you I mean how is it this is a search engine so uh, question mark and yeah, so it's it's not exactly a search engine in the sense that really this is a data standard so it's really about just how the data gets described or encoded but one of the implications of that is that if you do that in a regular way it does become easier for search engines to, to index, or if you're using an activity finder, um, it, it defines the categories that you could use to filter. Um, so if you were looking for, say, classes that were for women only, because there's a gender restriction um, data point in our data standard, that kind of filter is easy to support in an activity finder. Um, so yeah, search search would be one use case for. Yeah. So you have so it's possible to search for like women only stuff and D 
disability friendly stuff are, are there other current searches that I mean are there, are there other uh, age range is a common one right um, people looking for yeah, senior or for children often um, and then more obvious ones like what kind of activity you want to do you know if you're looking for racquetball so on and so forth um, geographical searches are quite common what's what's near me um, so it's about I suppose on one level, thinking specifically of the search use case, it might be what kind of filter is appropriate. Um, more generally, the other way that end users would experience the results of the data specification is the kind of information that was presented. Um, so for instance, in the case of say a disability, it might be that you could select, first of all, filtering for um, hearing impairment. And then when you got to a description of the activity, there would be you know, a, spe a specific text box saying, the way we cater for a hearing impairment is that we have a hearing loop. So that might not help you actually, if you've got certain kinds of hearing difficulty, but that you have that information there before you go. Um, so I suppose the question is, first of all, yeah, if, if a filter or search term is particularly desirable, that's one aspect of it. And another would be just what kind of information would be useful to somebody who's looking for something that's LGBT friendly. Yeah. So, I mean, at the moment we, um, you've got LG, so lesbian, gay, bi and trans. Um, I think at the moment uh, it's standard to add a Q to that, which is queer. Uh, but then after that, you also have intersex and then there's an A as well. And I'm sorry, but I don't know what the A stands for. It's all getting, um, quite confusing. So, I, I mean, to put a sort of a, bro a, a broad brushstroke on it, you could probably, and we tend to do that in Act for Sport, uh, we tend to put the LGBTQ+. Plus. Um, so we just add the Q to your T. Um, and I, I think that would be really, really great. Um, I mean, if there was a possibility to 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 sort of to have I mean in a way there are two sorts of clubs aren't there there are there are LGBTQ plus friendly clubs where you'd want them to say you know in what way they were friendly <laughs> uh, but then there's also I mean in out for sport um, a lot of our clubs are are predominantly uh, LGBTQ. Um, so that might be another way to divide um, divide the people searching whether they're looking for a yeah an exclusive or inclusive type place. Mm -hmm. So when you say exclusive, you mean so exclusive would be solely for people who identified as LGBT. Well, it, it would never be solely because that would be against the law. Um, but like out to swim is a gay swimming club, so we're very uh, we're very upfront about being a gay swimming club. Uh, uh, but lots so of clubs the, are, say the intended audience, I suppose, would be. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of uh, LGBT dominant or LGBT focused. Yeah, it's a focus. Um, and then the other ones are just ones that maybe do very specific things to be inclusive and would provide a safe space for someone that did identify as LGBTQ+. Potentially, that'll be almost, like you said, the secondary box in terms of being specific about what that actually means once you do mm -hmm. you click on it um because i mean most places sh should should be fr i mean nobody should be saying that they're not friendly <laughs> no but it's like but Vicky, yeah yeah i can i get that vicky but it's it's what you actually do do rather than just saying you are because for example we know there's lots of clubs that say they're open access to all disabled people and yet they've got like a big step into the and then there's actually nothing in terms of anything different they're doing they just say it because they think they should do so yeah. I think it would be having a description of what that actually means in terms of inclusivity rather than just using it as a generic term mm -hmm. um, and is it possible to give examples of what sorts of steps those would be The the ones that's so it could be 
in in terms of just the language that they use in terms of their promotion it could be how they just welcome people it could be in terms of the literature they provide for for new members and things i would suggest those are the kinds of things not just saying it is and then actually not doing anything to make someone feel welcome and obviously the like the, the example that the vicky gave about out for swim is is a predominantly kind of yeah, targeting that as your primary audience um okay um i'm just thinking i think i mean i think um i mean the dip, the the sort of the, when people don't feel included i mean often trans people don't feel included uh for one reason or another so i mean that would be something that um yeah you would you would want people to be um to state their sort of how trans friendly they were and that would include information about changing and stuff like that, which is um, often difficult for trans trans people. Sure. Yeah. So that's interesting because that's yeah, because being welcoming in a generic sense could be about about language or about the literature that's provided. But of course, if it's about facilities, it's actually about having the facilities, right? Um, and so then it's about. Yeah, having the facilities and having a good way to describe them um, as as trans friendly, um, and I suppose and there would be a wide variety of facilities that could fall under that that rubric. That would actually probably need quite a bit of description to clarify um, sufficiently what that would be. Um, so I feel like we're. It feels like quite free texty. It feels like what's really wanted is a sort of description that's entered by somebody at a club um, more than it's a um, more than it's a sort of list of things. You know, it's not it's not a standardized list. It would have to be fairly free form, I think. Is that fair? Yeah, I was, yeah, I think so. Um... Yeah, I'm not quite sure where this data is. Is is is, is this data held? Um, I mean, out to swim, we have a so on our on our web page, we've got a, a special a, a section which gives detailed information about changing facilities for trans swimmers, so that they know which changing areas are easy and which are not so easy. So some of our pools are not so easy and some of our pools are great. Mm -hmm. And how was that information gathered? From, from the swimming pools. Okay, so you, your organization would bring up the swimming pools and sort of say, you know, can you describe your facilities or? Have well, you yeah, any... the person who writes it's probably somebody who's been to the pool. Oh, um, okay, so you've got almost like reviewers who go out and get this information. Uh, yeah, because, yeah, because the, well, the pools that we hire, so we uh, out to swim, we have to, we don't have a home or anything. So mm -hmm. we use uh, nine, eight or nine different pools around London. So each one has different, different challenges for changing for trans people. So each one needs a description of how tricky it is or, or, or how easy it is. Okay, and but it, and it sounds very bespoke that that you sort of go out and you take a look and because of it, having an in depth knowledge of the kinds of challenges faced by trans people, you can come up with a, an adequate description of that. Yeah, I right. Think that's how it's been done. Yeah, I mean it's basically a team of people. Um, you know, um, you know, probably like, you know, the pools that I knew better, I probably told them what I thought the options were, and mm -hmm. somebody else. You didn't, it wasn't one person going around necessarily. Right, okay, but so you've got a sort of an informal network in a way or sort of a shared understanding through a variety of channels. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, Is it the kind of thing that could be um, not formalized in a spec sense, but like if there was, is it possible to provide guidance to people that are not so familiar with this that they could categorize their own pool or? facility um i'm just kind of thinking because the, the scale of data we're talking about you know you're talking about hundreds of facilities across the country and obviously yeah. ideally we'd set this up so that anyone who has a swimming pool you know be it david lloyd or or a, a local um operator um you know public funded operator could self-describe so that we're not limited by kind of a, 
a kind of review panel or do you think it needs to be uh, you know they're, they're, it's based on review and actually there's, there's no point people self-describing because they'll kind of get it wrong it will be unhelpful I don't know really um I wouldn't say that um I don't know uh I mean I think you should be able to I mean well so, so the, the London Aquatics is absolutely perfect for trans people because um, it has a, a, a massive family air, family change area, um, which anybody can change anywhere, and, and a small area for um, women only. So that is your perfect solution. Uh, I mean, like London Bridge, where we swim a lot, it's got a male change room and a female change room, so that can leave people in the trans community uh, somewhat um, stumped. I think I think you could probably you could probably categorize it into three. So one would be a very bespoke bespoke solution, which, like you say, is an exclusive space. One would be one that is not at all. It's a complete shared facility and one where there could be other spaces like a disabled changing room or some some other space. Do you think that that potentially could be categorized yeah. or is it even more than? No, no, I think that would be really useful. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe as well, I suppose, in terms of trans, you could sort of ask if the staff have had trans training as well. Yeah. Uh, because that would uh, yes. be something that would really help. Okay, so there's, um, and I guess that's, is that sort of a tick box? I mean, is that... Um, is that a yes or no kind of value or there are could that mean a lot of different things for a lot of different institutions oh, i think it's probably worth a try yeah, <laughs> it's think, a yeah in training training having had staff awareness on trans inclusion uh, absolutely i think as a starting point okay so and that that could be so go back to my point about some of the literature that so a, a lgbtq plus friendly organization the fact that they might be a friendly organization is that they have either people within the club who have had diversity or specific training on elements of the LGBT plus. So that could be, like you say, a drop down of how you demonstrate that you are an LGBT plus um, friendly organization is the fact that you have staff that are trained in inclusion. Okay, and that, could be, um, yeah, that could be a yes, yes or a no. Okay. Um, and how formally defined is that? Like, is there a sort of widely recognized training program for that or a set of sort of comparably, uh, comparable training programs for that? Or is it really kind of a free for all? Um, I don't know. I mean, I've had, uh, I've had quite a few sessions of trans training. Yeah, different gendered intelligence i don't think there's a yeah. standard for it i just think that there are organizations that provide some yeah. of it accredited some not but yeah i, I don't think gender's intelligence is very is very good yeah that's um, the one that i i went on but um, yeah i think initially you would just do it as a yes or a no without going into a huge amount of detail about uploading certificates or what what they are <laughs> what they are or whether it's accredited or non-accredited you're looking thoughtful, Nick. Yeah, we've got the telepathy going on here. Um, I I was wondering whether G L G B T does it need to be subdivided? Is is that, or are we, or is it more inclusive to not? I guess what I'm thinking is like, are there going to be sub communities within the overall L G B T Q plus community that need to be recognised and have sessions for them, or is it is it like those that are um what's the word uh, aware and those that are not kind of and those that are aware enough to be running a session specifically for people uh, is it like yeah well yeah but i mean like i said earlier it you know as soon as you start dividing it all well, that's you know there are a no there are a number of letters that we could add to this list and uh I, I don't I, I don't know I mean I, I I think I couldn't really tell you what the right thing is to do on that but um you know you'd need more 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 LGBT yep. plus organizations in the room really um I think as an I think that's an evolutionary thing so I think initially the kind of LGBT is almost the first the first point that you go to 
And then you could then have subsets where you then describe it's only for this particular group within the LGBTQ plus A um, as the, almost the second, third, fourth, but I think initially just identifying that alongside the main kind of filters would be a, would be a really good starting point. Yeah. And not making it too complex in the first instance, because if we just said it was just a simple, you know, because like you say, if you if you start getting too complex and you start putting 15 letters, then a 16th letter will want to be added. And then it becomes very, rather than a simple solution that we were trying to find to a problem that was- but Then we'll just get back to gay. <laughs> well, well, perhaps, <laughs> but yeah, perhaps, perhaps, who knows? I, guess. I, no, go on. You got to. I was going to say, I suppose the only point where it really becomes an issue is where you've got classes with a very particular audience intended. Um, so that if it's, you, you know, like there's the, the Prisian uh, lesbian football club, I forget their name, but, you know, specifically aimed only at women who identify as lesbians. And, you know, if uh, somebody else in the spectrum of LGBT, LGBTQ showed up, they would you know, they would not be the target audience. So I suppose that's the only point where there's a bit of friction there. But then that doesn't necessarily need a separate data point that can, you know, you presumably reflect that in the title of your event, who you're, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think those frictions are frictions that the community is dealing with on a, uh, regularly, um, those frictions. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that, I think you're probably, uh, yeah, I, I think like Dave said, we should probably just keep it simple, really, okay. to, to start with, I think. Yeah, I think if there's the opportunity to have a descriptor, I think that would be fine, wouldn't it, Vicky, initially? Because like I say, if it is a group specifically like tag swimming group and you have a target audience of only trans people, you put that in a descriptor after you click on the LGBTQ plus friendly it will tell yeah, you I mean, there is a free text description field. So yeah, there's plenty of scope there. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay, so my, my inventory so far is that there's uh, sort of, um, I guess, four data points. Um, one would be sort of LGBT inclusive or friendly um, as, a, as a kind of yes or no value, um, but um, possibly supported by a text field indicating unpacking what that actually meant. Um, there would be LGBT targeted. I'm not too sure what the right word for that is, but sort of intended audience LGBT um, only. Um, there'd be a Boolean, a yes or no value for sort of sensitivity training, LGBT plus sensitive training. Um, and then um, a triple value for what changing facilities are like, um, which, is, which is either bespoke, shared, or with uh, individual um, changing units. Is that a fair summary of what we've said so far? Yeah. Okay. Targeted isn't the right word yet, but um, maybe mm. it's something near hosted or um, I, I, haven't, I haven't found the right word, but yeah. I'm sure over the time we can find that right yeah. word. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, this is the kind of thing that we can, well, I'm not too sure what the right channel would be. GitHub feels like a strange place to hold that conversation, but uh, yeah, we can, we can find a way to discuss that more precisely. Um, Nick, in terms of the changing facilities, that's a bit hard to fit into the spec as it's currently written, isn't it? Um, so they they have so we've already got changing facility as a attribute on the place, mm. for the, and, and I I wonder whether this is just more options in that area. Mm -hmm. So okay, you, you, I I wonder I wonder whether some of the um, there might be something in the way that we spec this around trying to make it as generic and, uh, and useful to as many different other audiences as possible. Yeah. Almost because it, in the fact we could, you know, LGBT plus blah, 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 blah. It's almost like if we try and be too specific, we might undo ourselves with, um, yeah, with what, what might come down the line. So 
so yeah if we if we were to describe the fam the changing rooms more kind of uh, less about lgbt in fact and just more about you know is it family changing versus mm -hmm. individual gender changing versus shared changing facilities just being really clear on those definitions and that that's literally just anyone who's uh, you don't need any special training to discern which of those mean what and it might be helpful for family to know that as well in fact rather than you know and, and others. yeah i mean i know it comes uh, comes up for um um groups like muslim women who don't want to change who, who need um their own space so mm -hmm. I think that the more that you can describe your changing room, um, the better. But yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be. I mean, it would help everybody, wouldn't it, to know what the change rooms were like? I'm just thinking it helps it helps to do it precisely or with a standard vocabulary so that then you can kind of filter fairly easily as opposed to people just <laughs> doing it ad hoc. We're going to put a mess. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, but I think I, I think arriving at that vocabulary would be fairly simple because yeah, I think I summarized it one way. Nick summarized it slightly differently, um, but I think actually we were converging pretty strongly on what we were describing. So it shouldn't be too hard to find a clear form of words. It's just describing the physical outlay of of what the facility is. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Okay, I mean I think I don't I don't want to draw things to a close prematurely um, but I feel like we've actually already made quite a lot of headway here in terms of requirements gathering um, and I feel like probably the next step might be to widen the conversation out with organizations that couldn't make it to this particular call maybe write this up into a formal proposal and circulate it for further input Yep. I did wonder, Vicky, whether your example of those swimming might be almost a test. A test. These are very real things that won't take a huge amount of time to copy over where you're promoting them at the moment onto, onto this kind of format and almost doing a test with something that's real. Mm. And then and then maybe showing other other people and getting opinions mm. rather than the theoretical side. It becomes a very real, let's watch, let's look and take someone on a user journey and then see if it meets the requirements of those users. Some, there is some really good research somewhere that I think Swim England did about changing facilities because it is a bit of a it's it's quite a difficult it's a difficult can be a very difficult issue so mm. I think mm. Swim England have got a really good document about okay. how to be that. more trans friendly. For that. I'm a swimming lead as well, so I've got good good links for Swim England, so I can have a look. I think it, Jamie. I know that Jamie Hooper worked on it, but he's okay. no longer. He's no no longer there, but I know there is. Yeah, I've got links with, with the engagement team there, so I can certainly look and try and find that. And it might and be. Sport there, England maybe. actually probably has also got similar guidelines, which might be. Yeah, because Jamie, when he was there, did their toolkit, which kind of had to get pulled yeah, down after some of the issues, didn't it? But I'm not sure there might be some resources still. But that all those all that information should be there. Um, but yeah. But it'd be better to have some, you know, if we're going to talk about what what's useful for trans people, it'd be better to have some trans people on the call, really. Yeah. Do you know? Because I only got introduced um, to LG. BTQ consortium, do, do they represent groups from trans community yeah. in London? Okay, so that would they be able to speak. Okay, great. Because I know they couldn't make it um, today, but that's useful to know. Okay. Um, yeah, that was a couple of slides down the road. Yes. Um, further organization. So there's Swim England. Um, having a has some sort of output about this yeah uh, sporting totally. also had a, a toolkit but it sounded as though that was um maybe not available right now it should be available yeah okay. I, I think it should be on their website somewhere okay um uh, i'd be surprised if it wasn't there should be something up there um i mean in terms of swimming there's pride in water as well um but i do, it depends whether you you know how Deep you want to dive into individual sports. I mean, this is more of a yeah, which is all it sports, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I, but I know that the work's been done in swimming in England because I'm a swimmer. Um, well, 
Yeah, and I, I feel like it might be nice to do a, a deep dive, so to speak, into one sport, just because if it if it can work there, you've got some confidence that it could be applied somewhere else. Whereas if it doesn't work there, you know that there's definitely a shortcoming, or at least you have a better understanding of where the shortcoming might be. And the, the practical kind of um, related suggestion for me is is that um, there's already a in the spec there's already kind of a, a generic category. Uh, scores vocabulary, which we haven't defined the scores vocabulary for. Scores, sorry, scores um, drop down list of stuff that we um, haven't got the uh, drop down for. It's just category with could be anything. Who knows? Uh, free text. Um, and I, I wonder whether there might be an advantage in making the LGBTQ plus inclusive, friendly, and LGBTQ plus targeted um, kind of just just new entries in that drop down rather than making a new kind of field if you like a right, new yeah, yeah. drop down on the uh, and the reason for that being that it, it means that it'd be quite so part of the challenge of the specification is getting adoption so um andrew on the call represents an organization that would have to do some work to make this happen uh, and uh, many others would have to do the same and so there's a kind of lag between when we come into this forum and sometimes it takes years to get from here to that being in all the different systems that would then need to, to, to do that. So if we sense that this might be one of those iterative things where maybe we put a couple of tick boxes and someone comes up with another one, um, there might be benefit in making this kind of part of that existing drop down so that once a team like Gladstones or others have, have implemented that drop down, then the new values just get added automatically. So they don't need to do any more work. And therefore the initial adoption push we'd need to do as a kind of uh, community, I suppose, is let's get LGBTQ features in. But once that feature's in, it can kind of evolve a bit more organically without needing to go on another push every time there's a slight yeah. addition to that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I think as well with that, Nick, we probably need the operators on the call as well to mm -hmm. how they define. Because I, I picked up on your comment earlier, Vicky, about people might display that they are um, compliant in some way, but actually when you turn up, like you gave the example of there's a big step for someone to get over and they can't even say, yes, it's a, they're just using that as, as, so it almost needs like a validation. So I think there's, and that's why I'd quite like, you know, to get some of the operators on here to actually hear how they, mm -hmm. how they perceive themselves as well, because I'm, I'm guessing they want to display their inclusivity as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think, I'm, I'm just trying to think, uh, I, I think you're definitely right that we need to talk to operators. Um, and I'm thinking back to Nick's comments about, about making this sort of more implementable and something that's actionable. Um, I think the only, I think when that, when that SCOS solution isn't good is when you have to pair it with something else. So if we did want to pair, uh, you know, LGBT inclusive with a field saying what that actually means, if that pairing was desirable, then that solution wouldn't work. Um, and then if it was, um, uh, I guess sensitivity training would probably be okay if it was just sort of saying, yes, there's, there's, this training's happened, that it would work fine there. Um, yeah, and then if there if it was a question of having some kind of verification or review process that something was in fact the case, again, that SCOS solution wouldn't would be limited because you couldn't pair it easily like that. So I suppose that's the the shortcoming there. Um, yeah, and I guess the, I guess part of the the free text thing might be, as you said earlier, there's a description field that's quite comprehensive. So you know, is that is it the case that just kind of balancing that kind of heavy implementation yeah. work versus, yeah. you know, if, if, for example, the only work required was um, an addition to the changing room at vocab that's there, uh, category drop down that's, that's, that's already in the spec and making sure the description's filled out, then we might be able to push for, I mean, it might be that we get, we could get wider adoption of that quicker and yeah. then yeah. go back and iterate after we've got some kind of, and then something, something working. Maybe. 
Yeah, I mean, I, that, that, that sounds sensible to me because I <laughs> I reeled off four data points being added to the specification, which is actually a lot, right? It's a lot. Yeah. Of that. Um, <laughs> Whoa. But, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like looking at the, 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 so the bank balance total of what that looks like. Yeah. Only the four. People who put the data in, are they, is it, I mean, this, I'm, I'm still slightly confused, but um, so you've got your operators that run the facilities, but is this also for clubs? To, to clubs also get like, so like, so I don't know, your swimming club, for example, would, uh, would, that, would your club have to have to enter data as well for this? Wouldn't be have to if it wanted to be searchable on on open data rather right. than you. So to, I guess when you're promoting your swimming opportunities, Vicky, someone would have to know out for out for swim exist and go to the website to find the sessions. Yeah. And this is about if you don't know that that organisation exists and you just want to find swimming in your local area that happens to be something that aligns with your own kind of preferences. Yeah, but then out to swim has to has to enter that yes so someone so someone yeah someone at some point would have to but then if you're promoting that already most of it will just be a simple cut and paste and a selecting when you're when you're opening up that data yeah it wouldn't, it wouldn't be necessarily a big ask and again i'm speaking from a layman and these people might know yeah much easier in terms so it's of like knowledge. clubs it's like dance groups presumably like uh no it's, yeah it's any individual organizer so it and, and I guess when we're talking about leisure centres there, and what Andrew's talking about when the, in terms of operators is the operator is the organiser. So you kind of, your better.org or your everyone active would be running the yoga session. Um, of course, you also have yoga sessions and, and the instructors that are doing the yoga would be paid by better.org or, or, or everyone active. Whereas um, some of those individual instructors might be self-employed. They might also run in a local community centre, another session. Um, and in that case, they'd be the organiser in the community centre, they'd be using their own little booking system to up, upload the information and they'd be filling that, that information out. Um, if they were employed by a big leisure operator, that leisure operator would be managing the descriptions and the, and the, and the inventory and filling it out. So it, it depends on the it depends on the organiser and who's funding the activity and the and the kind of governance around that as to whether it's just, you know, one person sorting it out on their own or whether there's a whole, you know, but it, cater, it does cater for both, Vicky. One person running one session will be found just as easy as having mm. all of GLL's activities in the whole country that are in all their pools, for example. Great. But it does require a yeah, it does require some some input, and if you haven't got that input, it will it will mean starting from scratch. But if you have got existing websites that aren't connected it will be just cutting and pasting the vast majority and maybe adding a few fields that don't currently exist. Um, yeah, it, it could require more extensive software alterations if, yeah, the, the category dropped down. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think the, I think yes. the unfortunate scenario for a I'll lot be very of simplistic in saying a few additional <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think the I think the unfortunate scenario for a lot of clubs might be that actually, if you've got a system that activates that drop down so that you do have an LGBTQ inclusive filter, um, and they have software systems that don't support that yet, of course it sort of makes it look like oh actually we're the, we're hostile or, or exclusive. Um, <laughs> there's that sort of difficulty. Um, although on the other hand, I, we're trying to drive change in the sector, so I suppose uh, that pressure is not entirely a negative one. But uh, yeah, it does. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it's similar for the disabilities, you know. I mean, it's it's got to it it yes, it should drive change. That's okay, so I think that's why we're here, I guess. <laughs> um, I think in terms of of actions, um, so I think most of it's actually on me to write up what we've just had into a proposal to be reviewed by people on this call, and then also by other organizations that were that were mentioned. Um, so there was Pride in Water, uh, LGBTQ plus consortium. Um, the Stonewall, yeah, Stonewall were Stonewall. interested. Yeah. Um, yeah, Vicky, you'd have to supply the Pride in Water and then maybe any others, but certainly I can give uh, the two that I've been in touch with and responded. So the LGBT plus consortium um, and Stonewall were both interested. They couldn't make today. And, and I was Lou interested as well. 
Uh, she didn't get back to me. So I don't know if she's been very busy. Obviously, okay. the, I've been away for the last ten days, so I haven't chased it. But okay. I can, yeah, she might. I would imagine she would be interested. Yeah. Uh, okay, so there's there's once the proposal is written, I think reaching out to them, yeah, with a link to that to say what do you make of this, with the understanding that it's provisional and, and still open sure. for discussion. Yeah. Yeah, so I can either, if you wanted to send it centrally, I can either give you those details or I can distribute it to, and Vicky, to two groups. It depends how, how best you want to manage the next phase. Um, I think maybe if you could if you could share their details with Tim and I, yeah. um, but a kind of as, a, as an email introduction, I think that would be okay. nice. So then we could take it from there, but there'd be a bit of a bit yes. of an understanding there, yeah. I don't. I don't have a. Deep, I don't have contact. A specific contact for Pride in Water, but I'm pretty sure that it's on the British Swimming website. Okay. The, the other thing, just to uh, for the context of people, there are some operators who are implementing. Um, sorry, some booking systems operators that are implementing um, in in the next few months. Um, so, in terms of. I, mean, I don't know exactly when, but in the next six months, we, we expect to see um, some of these implementations be completed. So in terms of the scale of working on this, if, if in the next few months it was possible to get to a, a, a solution, it might be that back then that drops into those operators systems as a kind of additional field that'd be quite easy to add while they're working on it. Um, if we miss that kind of six months kind of time span, it might then be a couple of years before the next, I don't know, it depends mm. on the priorities, but it might be, a, yeah. it might be prudent to, to look at it sooner rather than late not like next week but just you know. yeah, yeah yeah okay you know that's useful it's useful to have a deadline with these things it's easy to have it go into github graveyard and yeah. come back from the dead every couple of years yeah um i mean if we had an answer now gll and mcl would already yeah. do it i imagine okay that would be fantastic okay um I think the only action that's not on me is if somebody could point me towards the Swim England changing facilities research, that would be quite useful. Sure, I'll have a look for that and I will send you. If you have link. trouble, oh, uh, I'll just ask Jamie <laughs> where it is. Okay, okay. If, I used to, where is he? He's moved up north, hasn't he? He's moved up north. He's, set, the, up uh, he in, he's set up an inclusion company. So oh, great. Okay, I've great. still got I've still got numbers for him. Yeah, so. say hello for and if he yeah, if I can't find it easily on their website, which yeah, just knows, give me a shout right. and I'll uh, I'll I'll let you know where it is. Okay, okay. I th think uh, is there any other business anybody would like to raise at this point? Well, thank no, thank you. I'd like to say thank you very much, actually, for inviting us and including us. And um, it's, uh, I think it's brilliant that uh, that that this could happen. And yeah, thank well, you. No, thank you for coming, Vicky. <laughs> yeah, thank you, for, thank you for coming. And um, I'll tip my hat to to London Sport and to Ollie for uh, raising raising the issue with us so that we can address it. Um, and okay, I will aim to write up. Uh, the results of this call uh, sometime next week and then yeah I'll, I'll ping everybody on this call and we can get that out there yeah great okay thank you, thank thank you, you so much for joining everyone Especially vicky thank you vicky thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Yeah. bye bye, bye.